be out by just after nine, so we haven't got a lot of time left, but I really appreciate you coming. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And I think we've got some excellent work from many different artists, so I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, found it a good time. I just want to say a couple of things. Arnie, my brother over here, mentioned uh, the idea, the origin behind this small art movement and why we think this small art movement might grow into something more substantial in the future. I'm just going to speak for a couple of minutes about the art in practice, okay? Intention in practice. Um, we've given it a little label, which is a common, uh, not a common word, but it's a word that we haven't actually made up called palimpsest. And the idea of palimpsest, it's not the same for all the words here, but uh, 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 certainly the majority of them, is the idea of layering. Now, the idea behind intention in work is that you have an intention, attentive process. You have a creative process as you work towards your final team. Now that, as I'm sure some of you will know if you're artists, will mean that every few moments you'll think of another decision. Something to leave, something to add, something to edit. And that happens until you've made your final editing decision. And that's when you decide to intend no more. But every decision is a mini intention. And we thought, well, what we can do is show that visually. And how we do that is to show the layers of your creative journey in the work. So for example, the large painting on the back there, which is uh, one of mine, is um, uh, a painting called The School of Postmodernism, based on the School of Athens by Raphael. And uh, very, very briefly, what I've got here, as some of you might be able to see, is the editing process still being visual. So elements what I've decided to change, uh, things I've decided to keep in, you can all see it there. Uh, Later decided uh, after I started to paint it to make it pregnant, you can still see it before she was pregnant. So you can still see his creative trail. We're not ashamed of it. Francis Bacon, an amazing painter, but when a work of his didn't work, he threw it in the bin, he burned it, didn't want anybody to see it. We're not afraid of our mistakes. We'd like to be a fly on the wall when uh, Paul McCartney was writing a song with John Lennon. Why did they decide on that chord? Why did they decide not on that particular note or that particular instrument? What was their creative journey like? We find that as fascinating as the final piece itself. So we've got various works like that. We've got this ironic statement here with a photograph. The letters are random. It's said with spaghetti, um, alphabet spaghetti. And obviously, if you can read it, then it proves the sentence isn't true. Um, a couple of other things, we've got Gideon's work over here, his work throughout is very much based on palette plays. I just wanted to mention Gideon's and the music actually, because it's the same idea, and this idea is the intentional journey over a period of time. Not in one work, but over a period of time. So Gideon first of all painted this uh, toilet duck 11 years ago in 1998, and you can see how he's progressed into this particular painting with some of the palette ideas of layering 11 years later. You can see how that journey has pro uh, progressed. Two other things as well, and let's look at the music very briefly. Um, here we've got Frank Sinatra. Now Frank Sinatra recorded uh, a very famous song. Um, that song uh, was uh, a song written by Roger and Hammerstein, and it spoke uh, about a man when he's first been told he'll be a father, and how he is uh, taken aback by this, suddenly having such huge responsibility. And Sinatra recorded this, first of all in 1946, when he had just become a father himself. Then he recorded it in 1963, when he had just become a grandfather. And then in 1995, three years before he died. And what we've been able to do is we fuse the same song because it's the same orchestration in all three versions. So when you listen to his voice, very poignantly, you can see his voice, age, and his style and his interpretation changed and to the last moment when you can almost feel him singing fighting the very sense of mortality himself. The last piece of music based on the same kind of concept is, uh, where's Mark? There is Mark over here, his band uh, called Remodeled and what he's done very kindly for me is we've got a song called Obscure Subject Called Desire and we've got the origin through some texts that inspired the song and how these texts were progressed into the lyrics 
and how these lyrics progress into the final complete piece. So you've got this creation, created trail. It's like you leave pieces of paper when you go into the woods and we can follow each bit of paper along the trail. Um, and how it's uh, worked musically is that Mark and his band have been able to put the song that was recorded a few years ago and the same song recorded more or less today side by side together. So you can hear the modern version, I think it's in the right hand ear piece, and the older one in the left hand ear piece. And you can hear when they are the same and when they're different. Um, with, yeah, um, you didn't want to, you want to Well, I could briefly say yeah, that um, this, is, this is a chair that kind of passed through my family um, from the 30s when my grandparents bought a set of them um, when they got married. Um, but my, my grandfather wanted to be an artist um, but didn't think he was going to make any money and so he trained as an accountant and therefore got the nice house with the lace curtains and the <coughs> furniture. But that work on there is taken from this, which was one of his art homeworks when he was 13, which was done in 1914, saying never too late to mend. And so I, when I looked through that, I just thought, actually, that has some resonance because the fact that he did go, did, did actually leave behind his artistic um, ambition meant that I could take mine because, you know, he, I actually inherited enough from them all actually dying. It's, it's, it's almost like a memorial um, so that I can actually pursue my artistic intentions. And so I, I've kind of taken him along with me. So that's where that is. <laughs> and then a beautiful piece. We'll leave that there. Please, I don't know what the time is, but please stay on and uh, keep looking and having a chat. I've got one final point, actually. We do have a, an exhibition, a big one coming up in 2010. For that reason, we would like a number of things. If you find yourself, if you're looking around, thinking, I would like to do some art, intentist art, then get yourself onto the intentist website, join up, and think about how you can be part of the exhibition, because we'd love to involve you. <coughs> If you find yourself thinking, actually, art isn't your thing, but you'd love to write about art that you see and, and go to exhibitions and give the intentest viewpoint, because we've been discussing it, some of the people that were around, we've been talking about how we'd look at other people's art that isn't pushing and celebrating intention, um, but we'd see the intention within that artwork. There are plenty of exhibitions happening around London and elsewhere. We would love you to write reviews, intentest reviews. So again, get on the website and let us know about that. And if there's any further ideas that you have, Please join up and let us know because later on next year the exhibition that we'll have will be considerably bigger and we hope to move around, not just staying in London. So we're looking forward to that. Please keep in touch with us and please let us know what your ideas are. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.